everybody, Larry Lawton here. Do I got a good video for you today? I was doing some research and people been asking me to review the video of the 10 most dangerous inmates in prison. Well, I watched the video and I don't like what they put up there. I don't believe in what they put up. Yes, there's some very dangerous inmates, uh, but most of the people I know or the stuff that I witnessed firsthand or heard firsthand are more dangerous. So instead of reviewing that video, I thought I would tell you some of the most horrific things I saw and things I know from maximum security prisons that I was in. First, I'd like to uh, get started by please checking us out on YouTube, member programs, Patreon, Discord, check out my merch, the book, Gangster Redemption. Please subscribe if you like what we're doing. We're trying to build a great platform here so we can have some real power with prison reform as everybody knows. So I am gonna jump right into this video. And you know, this video actually brought back memories of mine. So I'm gonna explain a couple of the incidents that I know that are true, are fucking witnessed by me, or told to me by the persons themselves or what I know about them by their paperwork. Obviously, you know, as a person who was in prison and did law work, I used to pull paperwork. So some of the people, I, I know what they did and some of it is, Horrific as you can get. That's all I'm gonna say. Now their video had stuff like Charles Manson, uh, Barry Mills, which is a the Aryan Brotherhood head of the Aryan Brotherhood, but they didn't mention people that I know either personally or uh, know of who did worse. Uh, whether it was Silverstein himself, one of the founders of the Aryan Brotherhood. So I'm gonna get into this. One of the incidents that always strikes out at me is when one of the young people I know got his anus cut from the top of his anus until his scrotum and seminal fluid was found. And here's the story. Uh, actually, you get up very early in prison. I get up at 6 a.m. every morning. In fact, I never slept past 6 a.m. in prison. You don't do that. You get up when the doors crack. And when you say crack, they open the doors. And every prison I was in, we didn't have electric doors or anything like that. They had a guard who came around what they call turnkey and turn the key and open the door and you'd hear him start at the you know the beginning of the unit and work its way around and you'd hear him and you come you get ready with your boots your sneakers you're getting up getting coffee get ready for chow one of the inmates that we know a friend who worked in the medical department came into the unit from the night shift or wherever it was coming he says you guys got to read this you know we know what happened i'm gonna tell you why from the night before of course we were at the night before i'll get get that part for us but the night before it's just after lockdown in Atlanta and we hear screaming. And I mean screaming for your life. If you ever heard a man scream, I mean, ah, I mean like screaming. I don't mean like a fucking, you know, ah, I mean a man fucking screaming for his life. Now, the tier is locked down, so we can't get up there. We can't get out. We can't get to where this person is to help him. You know, you can't, your door's locked, things are locked, you hear, you see, you see the guards come running, you know it's a friend of yours up in the cell, and we absolutely, we didn't know what was going on, obviously, and so all of a sudden, we go to bed, things come out, you're watching out the window, you're looking out the window, but we didn't see anything at this time, because they didn't take them down to my area, they didn't then, they took them down to another area. So here we are, watching this whole situation, screaming, everything else. Next thing you know, we get up in the morning, you get up. Actually, I saw crime scene tape up at that door. Still can't get up to that area. And I see crime scene tape, crime scene tape, yellow tape across the door to cell. Didn't think anything of it, couldn't get up there. We go, the guy, get up. The guy comes from the medical department, he says, you gotta read this. And it has in there, inmate's name, and it says, inmate's name, and then it says, was cut with a sharp, his anus was cut with a sharp object from the top of his anus until his scrotum and seminal fluid was found. Now, we know who he was, we know he didn't die, we know he was taken to the outside hospital. Sure enough, he fucking uh, never saw him again, we never saw him again, but think of that. I still, to this day, hear those screams, and sometimes, I have nightmares. You know, I can admit how, how fucked up my head sometimes gets from some of the stuff I've I've seen and witnessed. And, and that is an incident that is like, I mean, like, thinking about that. 
You know, often I used to get when I tell stories or, t or, or speak at groups, people would say to me, well, why would they do that? Don't they want a tight ass if you're gonna rape somebody? And I have to explain to everybody that rape is not a crime of sex, it's a crime of violence. In fact, when I did get up to see that cell area, you could see blood on the bunk. I mean, you wanna talk about just a gross thing to do. And you know, even though the person didn't die, it was one of the worst, you know, ones that I remember and I hear and it, it, it affects me in some kind of way. So that's just one. Now, another one, and this happened by guards. Again, not a death, but I'm gonna get into some of them. So uh, this is kind of freaks me out. And again, it's a sound I hear to this day that can fuck me up. And, and you know, people don't know you know, I often tell people, you know, sometimes I, I I'm, you know, they say, Larry, you're a really nice guy. You can do, I says, but you know, sometimes I worry myself about snapping. Uh, sometimes I think that, you know, I got to catch myself from getting mad or, you know, doing something uh, when I hear about somebody picking on somebody or something. I hate that. I think that's the worst thing anybody can do is pick on somebody who is not uh, uh, able to defend themselves. You know, I wore this shirt for that because I don't believe in bad people, but I believe in bad choices. Some of the people here are just straight bad. But in this next incident, it was when I was in the hole, and I tell these stories, so you might have heard the story, but it, it, this is collectively what I think of, is I was in the cell and I heard the guards literally snap a guy's leg like it was a fucking piece of wood. And you know, you heard him come in. It's what they call the goon squad comes in. At that time, they didn't cover the windows. They used to cover the windows after that. You know, they cover the windows with a piece of like magnet. And sure enough, I hear them come into the goon squad. And I, you know, they're getting ready. So everybody in the whole tier is up on the fucking door. This is in the hole. And we're all up looking and trying to look. And if you got, you know, you got a celly because sometimes in the cell, uh, hole you sometimes get cellies. And you know, you're both trying to look, one's the tall one, you're looking out the window, you're listening, you're hearing stuff. Now this is happening in the cell next to us. So you, you wanna talk about right there, you know, the goon squad's all around, and you're just watching them. First, you know, they come, cuff up, cuff up, because they did this to me. Cuff up, no, you don't cuff up, everything. Then once the goon squad, everybody comes from the case manager, which is your case manager, then the unit manager, then the captain eventually comes and says, this is gonna be your last warning. Captain's always the last one, head of security of a prison. This is the last one, I'm warning you. You better get a cuff up. And you know, the guy at this point saying, fuck you, suck my dick, or do whatever the fuck he's saying. And sure enough, they fucking open up. And now they're all out there. Now you see them. You see them, uh, you know, geared up. The helmets, the fucking flak vests, the fucking shields. And they're ready to go in. And they don't fuck around. They open that door and they rush in. And when I say there's nothing you can do, because the first of all, the shields they have are shocked. You know, you get electrocuted or whatever the fuck they do or how they do that. They'll mace you, they'll do stuff. Because they did this to me. I had this done to me, but I didn't have my leg broken. They beat me, they broke my ribs, they fucked me up. There's a lot of incidents that happened to me that were fucked up. But it's amazing how I hear the other one. They go in and you hear all the ruffling and, you know, the, 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 the you know, people, you know, a gr more, not screaming. Not screaming. It's grunting. It's fucking, you know, you hear people, uh, you know, fighting and fucking, of course it doesn't last long. It lasts seconds. It gets quiet and all of a sudden I literally heard snap, like a piece of wood snapping. Literally like a piece of fucking wood snapping. To this day, again, I hear fucking things in my head that fucking drive me crazy a little bit. I mean, I, I, I it, you know, it can happen anytime. I can be outside and it can happen. You know, matter of fact, I, I, I actually broke a piece of wood myself to do something. And then I, wow, look at this. I just got a whole fucking chill down my fucking arm. Oh my God. Holy fuck. Anyway, hearing this, and then I'm still at the door. Now the medic comes in, the guy comes in, they come in with a gurney, they put the guy on a gurney, he passed out. He's laying on the gurney, he's coming out of the, of the cell, and his leg is literally this way, hanging off the fucking gurney. They didn't even move it back. I don't know if they couldn't move it back because the bone was stuck that way, whatever the fuck it was, his leg was snapped like a piece of wood. Like this, you can't turn your leg. You're laying on a gurney flat. 
You can't turn your leg fucking in a 90 degree angle. And they fucking take him out and you know, it's amazing because after incidents like this, you know, we, the inmates, they get fed or whatever's coming up next, whether it's nighttime or whatever. And it's really a eerie quiet, if you know what I mean. It's like an eerie quiet, you know, you want to say, you know, oh, fuck yourself, motherfucker, you know, you scumbag. Now, it wasn't the guards that were on the tier. This is, I got to say that. And again, there's always some good guards. This was done by the goon squad, the people that don't give a fuck. These people must sign up for that for whatever reason, and they want to be part of the great prison fucking people. So that that's two incidents I know. Another incident I remember very much so was during Christmas time. A guy gets on the phone, and this is in ATL, and he gets in on the phone, and at that time, the system has changed, but at that time, you could call back to back. And this is why I think they changed it. In the phone system, you have to put numbers into your phone, and then when you call, you have, you have money on your books, you make a phone call, and you get 15 minutes and the phone cuts off. At that time, you can hang up, pick the phone up, and make another phone call. You can do that. Now they don't do that. Once you make a phone call from your account, you have to wait an hour to make another phone call. So if you had an argument with your old lady and the phone clicks off, because it's very abrupt, you don't even know what's happening, Trust me, 15 minutes flies fucking by. I know, I do videos. Anyway, you're on the phone talking to your girl. You could be in sex talk, you can be there, and you'll hear five, uh, one minute and one minute. Throughout the call, one or twice it'll say, this is a, a phone call from a, an inmate in a federal institution. But at one minute, they give you the one minute, or you heard a button, or you hear, heard like a click, and you knew it was one minute. Anyway, then you know you gotta fucking say goodbye, I love you, or whatever you're gonna say, and that's it. I mean, you know, we used to do all the stuff that normal people do. You had phone sex, do this with your girl, whatever you're doing. And anyway, this one guy, and I'll, not, I'll never forget, this black guy was on the fucking phone, and he had his chair. He actually had a chair put near the phone, and people did that. You know, they'd sit down, they'd make their phone call. Now, this is Christmas time, mind you. Christmas time and holidays, people make put a line up. You know, there's a line, literally. I, I mean, it's not a physical line you have to stand in. It's, you know, hey, I'm next. You know, I mean, you tell the next guy, hey, I'm up. I'm up next. I'm right here. I might be playing spades, might be doing something, but I'm up next, motherfucker. I'm online. Okay, and then he waits and waits the next guy. And then, I mean, I, listen, I've done that. And then say, go ahead, you take my spot, and I'll get next one. You know, because I'm in the middle of a spades hand or a pinot. I play a lot of pinochle. So anyway, we fucking do that, and fucking all of a sudden, you know, the next guy goes, well, this one guy, because everybody was waiting. There was a line, too. There's some lines, but not, you know, they're not a hard line, I call it, where, you know, if you, if, if you said you were next, people would respect that if you were up in line, because the first thing you do is you come down the stairs and say, who's next? Who's last? And then, you know, someone said, man, I got last, man. I'm right here. Nobody mind me. I go, I, I'm after you. Got it, man. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get enough respect around a prison when you know what's going on and nobody's going to jump that line. If they do, you got to do what you got to do. But anyway, this guy picks up the phone, makes his 15-minute call, hangs up, picks up the phone, starts to dial it. That's a big no-no. Big no-no. There's people waiting, motherfucker. Now you disrespect. You want to get off the phone and get in the back of the line? More power to you. You don't fucking just pick up the phone because now you're disrespecting everybody in that line. And I saw this one guy go up, leave the line, not much was there. People said, what the fuck you doing, man? You know, fuck you, fuck you. People get mad. People do, something's gonna happen. You see one guy go. He goes back to his cell and he comes back with a fucking shank. This fucking guy was on the telephone with his family. And this guy was in a chair. This other guy comes and fuck him right over his shoulder, stabbing him. Didn't see him coming. Stabbing this guy, fucking stabbing him. Phone drops, fucking blood all over the place. I mean, this guy's on the phone with his family. Getting fucking stabbed, goes down. Of course that fucks it up for everybody else because the minute that happened, it's lockdown time. The whole prison fucking lockdown, in fact. I mean, they don't know. Again, is it a riot? Is it a racial thing? Whatever, until they find out. Matter of fact, I don't even think we were locked down for a few hours in that one. It wasn't even a day, I don't remember. You get locked down, but they figure out right away what the fucking happened. This guy's on the phone. This guy fucked. But this fucking guy fucking kept stabbing this fucking guy. He died. That guy died. I mean, that was like, holy fuck. What the fuck are we, you know, this is not fucking. I'm like, holy shit, man, you know. But at this point in the prison system, I'm like, 
I get it. I didn't never thought I would get out alive anyway, so I was ready to violent. I stabbed two people myself, been stabbed twice. So I understand the game, so to speak. You have to do what you gotta do. And that guy fucking died right fucking there. And, and I thought, holy shit. But I knew Atlanta, I told you this, I knew Atlanta was gonna be a wild prison. I was in Atlanta, and they have two sides of a chow hall, the old chow hall, they call it. And they had two sides to the chow hall. My first week, maybe first two, three days there, I don't know many people. I knew the mobsters who hooked me up and they gave me a, a, a big bag of groceries, Vic Arena, took care of me after I gave him a note, which I suitcased to, you know, from another prison. And all of a sudden, fucking in front of me, maybe five people, somebody cut in line, and he was fucking stabbed and killed right on fucking line. I'm like, holy fuck, what am I in? This place is not right. This is a fucking zoo prison. Holy shit. But in that case, again, they knew right away. They didn't even shut the fucking prison down. And this is when I first got there. They closed that whole side of the chow hall, but kept the other fucking side running. I'm like, holy fuck. They didn't even interview me. I saw the whole fucking thing. They didn't interview me. They didn't. They knew what it was. They knew how it was. They must have knew something was coming. If you think cops, and we call cop guards, cops are fucking uh, really giving a fuck, let me tell you what they'll do. If they don't like a group, let's say they don't like the Aryan Brotherhood, or they don't like uh, whatever, the GD, or let's say they don't like, I don't know, Nietzsche, Latin King, whatever. They'll fucking put one of their people and know he's a snitch or know he's a child molester and put him on the yard and wait for that group to fucking stab him or do something to him so they can lock them all down. And they'll do that. They'll take the whole group off the fucking yard. They'll take five or ten fucking AB. Well, there's never more than four in a yard. Uh, we only had a couple, I think it was. And they, they won't fucking, they'll take them all off the yard because they want them off the yard. They don't want to deal with them anymore. And they'll take them off the yard and start the transfer process. Now, it, it's crazy because they do that. The guards would do that, or the administration does that. Listen, the prison system is not what people think. It's all holy than now fucking group. They're not. There's a very fine line between guard and inmate, just the way it is. Another one I heard, well, one of the guys I know, literally, literally, had three bodies, and I heard the stories, cut one guy's head off in another prison with a fucking shank. Think of what I just said. I don't know how hard it is to cut a person's head off because I never did it, of course. But fucking cut, cut a guy's head off with fucking uh, a shank and fucking killed the guy and fucking had a head. That, you can look these up on Google. Another Google one that was, and I know the guy. I, I know that guy. I was also in the prison when the one guy killed his celly for snoring. Put a shank in his fucking chest and on the top bunk, guy must have, I don't know the beefs, came up and fucking was fucking stabbed, killed the fucking guy, went back to bed. Next morning, they found the blood all over the fuck, seeped through the fucking mattress, the whole fucking worst. And fucking, of course, he said, you know, there's psycho fucking paths. You know, I think of those people and say, who would want them in their communities? Obviously, nobody. You know, and, and, and a couple of the deaths or things that happened to me, I was in the cell. I know the drug dealer, we're hanging out, everybody's in the, in the cell. And this one guy, and I remember who he was pretty good. He's 50, about 50 years, 51 years old. Now, I'm hanging out with the drug dealers. We party, we do things, we know each other. You know, we're hanging out. And this guy walks into the cell and says to the dude, the drug dealer, says, listen, I need five papers of heroin, and I'm not going to pay you. He ain't going to fucking pay me. Now, these drug dealers don't be playing either, you know. Uh, they're all murderers. There was a murderer, and... and he says, what are you talking about? No, oh, the fuck, don't fuck with me. You think you're, you're just a joke or some shit? Because you owe the money. He goes, no, I'm checking out. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm sitting on the bunk listening to this whole fucking conversation. And it was me, another guy sitting there in the bunk next to me. Guy was sitting on the toilet, and one guy was standing near the door. Now, there were a couple of guys out of the cell leaning on the fucking tier, you know, railing. And one of them was a lookout, obviously. Uh, you know, if guards came and stuff like that. And we'd hang out, bullshit, do fucking dope, fucking, you know, party. That's what we did. And sure enough, the fucking guy said, I'm checking out. And I'm like, I didn't get it at first. And then everybody kind of shut up and he goes, yeah, he goes, I can't take it anymore. Lost my appeals. I'm not going to live like this. And I'm like, holy fuck, am I hearing what I'm hearing? 
Now, I'm in Atlanta at this time about a year, so I know people have been around a lot. I mean, there would come good times, uh, I'll tell you about there. But anyway, he said he got the drug dealer gives him five papers of heroin. Now, five papers of heroin was $125. That's a lot in prison, especially back in, the, in 97, 98. This was 98, end of 98. He gives him the five papers of heroin. Now, that pipe, when I say paper, the reason they call it a paper, it's little, it's little in a paper, little thing, you open it up, and it's fucking enough to fuck you up. Well, five papers and the right kind of stuff will fucking kill you. So sure enough, this guy got a rig out, you know, went back to his cell, and I'm like, did I hear that right? We were talking about it. Of course, the drug dealer gave him the dope and said to him, you better be dead in the morning or I'm going to kill you. And they, these guys weren't playing. And it wasn't like afterwards you say, oh, you're really going to do No fucking way. These are people who are, have bodies already. Uh, they're capable of doing anything, so you just you, you act like you you're okay with it. But you know, I thought about it all night. You know that I is this guy gonna kill himself? Holy fuck! Would I ever do that? Because I told you in, in the hole I thought of suicide, and I understood it, but never did it. You know, I thought about it. Uh, don't tell me I wasn't close, because I was. And anyway, sure enough, next morning he was dead. But they found him at night. Actually, I don't know what time and how they found him. But he was, he was called dead. He comes out blue, you know, you'll see him come out in a stretcher. They gave bullshit, uh, what do they call it, uh, fucking CPR. I don't think they had Narcan then, which they have now. I don't think they had Narcan, uh, whatever, in the 98. I don't think they did. Or if they did, the prison didn't have it readily available. Oh, I didn't see guards with it, so to speak, that can shoot, you know, hit the guy with Narcan and, and reverse an overdose. Uh, so, no. This fucking guy, sure enough, fucking died in the morning. And I'm like, I fucking many, many years have thought about all this stuff. And, and, and to be honest, it fucking, it really freaks me out a little bit sometimes. And I think, am I, am I normal? I really do think that, guys. And, you know, am I okay? Am I uh, fucking able to be? But then I can go out and I can get with friends, uh, get with Ben's on the podcast, get with my brother. And be normal. I take care of my mom. And, but I often wonder how much how much effect it had on me and does have on me. Because one, I to be totally honest with you, I'm not. Fe I don't fear death at all. I don't fear death even a little bit. When it happens, it happens. It's going to happen to me. And, and when it does, it's going to be a sad day for the people around me. But I won't fucking know about it. And uh, I just don't fear it. I mean, that's I don't fear getting shot. I don't fear about, you know, something happening. If it happens, if a guy come into this fucking house, I'm charging him. I'm not fucking cowering in a corner. I'm going to do what the fuck I got to do to fucking save my family or fucking get killed doing it. And, and, and people who say that, I don't know if they've ever been in situations like me where, you know, you say what you're going to say, but until it happens, you don't know. I know I, what I can do. And I've been there, and I've been shot at i've been skimmed with a bullet through the head so i've been fucking shot at more than once i've been stabbed twice i stabbed two people so i i know what i'm capable sometimes i don't like that because sometimes i feel you know my gorilla can come out and if it does i know there's no turning back with me and that's a part of me that really worries myself i'm not just telling you that the the to, to say anything it'll be tough for sure because i'm not anymore i can't beat your asses anymore like a kid i was but I sure could kill somebody. And I don't mean that in a, in, in a way that I'm going to kill anybody, obviously. I'm saying I know what I'm capable of doing. And I know what people uh, understand that they think they're capable of doing. So in that regard, these things do haunt me. So don't ever think death or don't ever think doing something to somebody won't haunt you. Because I've done things to people. And I regret to this day. And I hate to say regret again. Uh, regret's one of those emotions I don't like. I wish I didn't do. How's that? Uh, definitely, I wish I didn't do. And, you know, I'm all, I'm okay with myself. I, I think I still treat people good. I try to help people. I try to help you or anybody else. And, and when I stop being like that, I feel I'm going to be in trouble. So, I, I, you know, I had to mention this because I watched that video of the most dangerous inmates uh, uh, by uh, the Supreme Channel. And... Listen to me, they were dangerous outside. People who were a doctor giving people drugs, killing their patients, they're not fucking dangerous. So yeah, are they psychos? Are they serial killers, psychos? All that kind of shit? Absolutely. I knew a lot of psychos that I had more fear for my, the psychos I know than any one of those people they put on TV. 
uh, uh, on their channel. Anyway, I had to get this out. I hope you have a great week. Please stay safe. Don't make bad choices. Don't go to prison, guys. Try to help somebody every day. That's how I keep saying I try to help somebody every day. And thank you for subscribing. If you haven't, please subscribe. Have a great day, everybody. Please keep the emails coming. Please comment. You know, I listen and read comments, uh, and I do that all the time, sometimes even at night, uh, doing nothing. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. Please make good choices, and I'll see you soon.